Welcome to the NPS Medicine Wise podcast, helping health professionals stay up to date with the latest news and evidence about medicines and medical tests. Hi, I'm uh, Steve Morris, the CEO of NPS Medicine Wise, which is an independent, not for profit organisation focused on improving the quality of use of medicines and medical tests. This is the first of a series of podcasts with a specific focus on COVID 19 issues and questions as they relate to medicines and medical tests. Our aim is to wade through the morass of information and often misinformation to provide answers based on evidence from trusted sources. And I'm joined in today's podcast by Anna Semecki. Anna, tell the listeners a little bit about yourself. Yeah, hello, Steve, and thanks for having me. So my name's Anna. I'm a GP based in Sydney, and I have a special interest in medical education. I joined the NPS Medicine Wise team earlier this year and have been working hard with our dedicated COVID-19 team to bring health professionals and consumers the latest updates. Welcome, Anna. Uh, Look, in this first podcast, we're going to be discussing one of the most widely talked about medicines, which has had full-page pronouncements appearing in newspapers recently. And that medicine is hydroxychloroquine. So, Anna, Mm. hydroxychloroquine has been touted in some quarters as a miracle drug. So why aren't we treating everyone with it? Yeah, look, Steve, that's a a great question. Um, As you know, all medications need to undergo a process of research and scrutiny to determine whether or not they're effective and safe to use uh, in the treatment of certain conditions. And hydroxychloroquine is no exception, even though it's technically not a new drug and has been around for some time. It's never actually been used to treat or prevent COVID-19 before, so it has been the subject of several studies uh, due to some initial promising results. Now, There is data available from three randomised controlled trials, and the reason I mention that is that randomised controlled trials are the gold standard study design for comparing interventions. These particular trials compared hydroxychloroquine plus standard care to standard care alone in the management of COVID-19, but unfortunately, the data from these is not yet strong enough to support its widespread use in the community, and that's for several reasons. So you're saying these trials have real limitations then? Well, yeah, exactly. So the the trouble is that, as with any study, there will be some limitations. And without going into all the nitty-gritty fine detail, uh, the three studies did have a few limitations, which I can point out today, and that includes uh, introduction of bias from the patient selection, allocation, and randomization process. Uh, It wasn't actually clear in some of these studies how that was done, on top of a lack of blinding as well. So not all the patients and researchers were blinded to the interventions. Uh, In addition to that, uh, the sample sizes were relatively small. So one of the studies, for example, only had about 30 patients. And last but not least, uh, outcome relevance is another very important consideration. And when we talk about outcome relevance, we're talking about things that are relevant to the real clinical practice world. So one of the end points in, in one of the studies was actually was actually looking at negative swab rate. Uh, and I can tell you that d- this doesn't really tell us much about the incidence of respiratory failure or mortality, which is probably what clinicians and patients uh, are most interested in. So in summary, the evidence as it stands at the moment is unfortunately lacking for hydroxychloroquine and more research is needed. Thank you, Anna. So in a sentence, how would you you sum up um, our our position in relation to hydroxychloroquine? Yeah, so unfortunately, as it stands, the evidence is just not robust or strong enough to recommend hydroxychloroquine be used as a medication to treat or prevent COVID in the community. Okay, thanks, Anna. That's really clear. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for having me. And just further to the podcast, there's a complete uh, evidence-based summary on hydroxychloroquine on the NPS Medicine Wise website at nps.org.au. And there's also a forthcoming series of podcasts. Our next topic will be on antivirals. So hopefully you'll join us then. Thank you for listening. For more information about the safe and wise use of medicines, visit the NPS Medicine Wise website at nps.org.au.